Hello VC. I'm back to show a few more albums that have arrived into my collection in the last few weeks and we'll start with this one here. That was uh, the Darley Rocker movement. This band with this particular album, at least, has sort of a bit of a Neil Sykes sound to it. I really like this album when I sampled it online and so immediately ordered copy. Now, a member of the VC, Steve Carlson, he showed this album last week. And then the previous week, he showed the new candies. So I think Steve is starting to lean towards the Neil site end of things there. And before we know it, he'll be showing an album by this band here. This is the latest album by Magic Shop and for all of you who are familiar with the band you won't be disappointed they stick to their formula uh, typical sounding um, Magic Shop album very good album definitely glad I picked it up really like that one band remains consistently good album from album here's a, a band that um, actually consists mostly of just one individual I don't know if I can print out um, pronounce his name here at all. It's Fabrizio uh, Cici. Uh, he plays almost all the instruments with the exception, uh, exception of a couple of instruments played by another individual. And um, it's a pretty good album. And I, I couldn't really find out too much about this um, this individual or band. Um, there isn't a heck of a lot up there. And uh, I'm glad I picked this one up. This is a quite a good album, a very interesting album, Trip Hill. say here is on uh, the there's quite a, a variety in music styles I would say in the various songs to the album so it's not a case of where if you hear one song 
Um, you've basically heard them all on that album. There's uh, quite a wide range of musics on there, music styles and that. Very interesting album. I really like it. Um, trying to find more music by that individual. And there is some stuff up there that is digitally released. Um, he does have another um, vinyl out. Um, I've heard it described as being lo-fi because I believe it was recorded on a like a four track cassette player or something like that. Don't know, but um, hopefully we hear more from that individual in the future. Here's a band that many people are familiar with, the Space Spectrum. <laughs> Jams Volume 1. There is also a Volume 2, which probably sounds pretty similar to this one. Um, reading comments on this, um, a lot of people are saying, well, you guys sound a lot like Electric Moon, which is probably a valid comment. They, they sort of do. Um, so if you're into that sort of thing, it's a great album to pick up. The last album by a group just about everybody's familiar with. And the band is Loop. to the hype sticker uh, they can see that was like a translucent orange uh, pressing there are three hop 300 copies of um, that orange vinyl I think there's also a limited pressing on transparent vinyl and of course the black vinyl is, is readily available you can get that off of um, probably any online service selling records According to this, this is the first studio album the band has done since 1990. I know a, bit, a little bit about Luke, but I don't know their history well enough. I don't know if that's, if that's inaccurate, but I'm sure it is. Um, that's a great record there. Um, worth checking out. That's brand new release. Uh, it hasn't been out very long. So sampling some music on uh, online there the other night and I came across um, a band, I think they're out of Connecticut, called Landing and they had out a new, uh, what's called Split EP, I think the other band was Headroom, I'm not absolutely sure. And I was just, yeah, that's pretty good and they're up on Bandcamp and I thought, yeah, I'll buy their record, uh, sounding great and uh, so uh, put the record in the shopping cart, went to check it out and the shipping fee was just a little outside of my comfort range. So I said, no, I don't think I will order this record. I emailed the band and said, like, what gives with a $200 delivery fee? And they were saying uh, the reason why is they do not want to ship uh, internationally. Uh, Bandcamp will not allow them to exclude international purchases. So in order to discourage international buyers, 
they just jacked the shipping price up to $200 US. So that's one EP I won't be buying. Oh well. So I was doing some uh, house cleaning um, a few well, more or less like two months ago now. So sort of like real in deep dive house cleaning, just throwing out a lot of stuff. And one thing I came across at the back of a closet, and I haven't been sitting there for 20 years at least, briefcase. And in the briefcase, filled with cassettes, cassettes that I recorded. There was no information whatsoever what was on the cassettes. I was guessing it's mostly 80s music, because that's when I was using a cassette player and quite often I was recording music off an FM station that was playing a lot of uh, import stuff that you couldn't get at the record stores at the time where I lived. And so the only option if you wanted a copy of that music was to uh, just record it off the radio. So I thought, well, geez, let's, let's pull out a, an old tape deck and give us some of these tapes a listen, see what's on there. And I had a, a Sony tape deck, a, a dual tape deck that had been sitting sort of in storage probably for 20 years. Pull that out, grab the first tape, put it in, hit the play button, I could hear the motors running, but the tape wasn't moving. So I suspected that's probably the belts are gone. And not very inclined electronically to try and open things up and fix it. But I happened to go online and I checked. And it just so happened on YouTube that about a month before I tested that, that tape deck, someone had put up on YouTube a very in-depth, detailed, step-by-step -step instruction video on how to replace the belts on the very tape deck that I own, the exact same model. So I said, geez, well, I'll just follow his instructions. And so I took the top off the deck, very first thing you gotta do, take a picture of the thing so that when you take it apart you know where everything goes back together. So I did that and then I uh, removed the front panel from the chassis. That exposes the tape drives. Each tape drive had two circuit boards that had to be separated to access the belts. Once I did that, I inspected the belts and found that they had actually turned to tar. It was just goop, is what the belts were. So, knowing that, I ordered a set of belts from China, which fit that tape deck, and in the meantime, started cleaning up all that tarry goop stuff off of the wheels, the pulleys, or whatever that uh, was just. Glue, almost glued to uh, the insides of that uh, tape deck. Uh, using Q-tips and automotive grease remover took me between four and five hours to clean up that mess. Got it done, waited for the belts to arrive. Once they arrived, I installed the belts according to that YouTube video, reassembled the tape drive, reattached the front panel, reconnected all the wiring, and then you decide to plug it in and let's see if all that effort worked out. <laughs> 